Hello everyone, Doug Crussell, the Savant here with K3 Nutriments. Tonight to talk about DMSO, dimethyl sulfoxide. And again, let me preface, you always want to talk to your doctor before using many alternative medicines. We feel at K3 Nutriments that alternative medicine is often hundreds of times, if not thousands of times better than the regular mainstream medical uses uh, or medical drugs, prescription drugs, if you will. But we still caution that uh, some, you know, not everything is right for everyone. So I just want to preface with that. But I wanted to talk about, this is a DMSO, dimethyl sulfoxide has two methyl groups, dimethyl, so CH3 twice, uh, CH3 is a methyl group, and then the sulfur and the oxide. Right there, by the fact that it has methyl group, an oxygen, and a sulfur, uh, is extremely important on how it works. Now, let's talk about the fact that um, DMSO is used primarily, oh, it was discovered first in 1866 by a Russian scientist and then became more mainstream used for medical purposes and such in the mid, like, 1950s. Um, so it took a while after it was discovered. Um, also, it's an organic compound. This, this compound is organic, but it was discovered as a byproduct of wood processing, so making paper, lumber, etc. Um, they quickly realized it had highly medicinal purposes so and properties. So just the fact that it has the methyl group, the sulfur, and the oxide is extremely important because methyl groups, as we know, if you've been following us for a length of time, you know the methyl groups are extremely important. That's why we have things like TMG, etc. Um, uh, there's also compounds like MSM, um, which is uh, methyl sulfur methane. Um, again, it has sulfur and methyl uh, group. Those type of things are extremely healing to the body. So let's get into this. So this is a topical um, analgesic, uh, a topical healer. But it comes in gel form. It can come in pure liquid form too, but the gel form is what I recommend if you use this personally yourself or if you're going to. Um, we would compare it in groups to things like Absorbing Junior, um, Tiger Balm, Icy Hot, Biofreeze, which none of them, excuse the phrase, would make a pimple on DMSO's butt. Um, DMSO is extremely effective. And way uh, better in the fact that it's not just an analgesic, but it's also a healer. And let's define why it's so much better. Well, unlike previous mentioned topical uh, application things, they some of them might be able to penetrate the skin, but that's where it ends. They can't penetrate and go through the skin. DMSO not only goes through the skin, into the bloodstream, and eventually even into the bone, where these other things will basically go into the skin and maybe help a little bit uh, with pain and such. But DMSO, because of its main properties, so let's go into the properties real quick of DMSO. One of them is it's solvent. That's extremely important because now you can not only put DMSO, like let's say you got a sore elbow. You can put the DMSO on the elbow, but you can also, and I'll explain why you gotta be super careful, but since it's a solvent, it will dissolve anything else in it pretty much, um, especially when it comes to pain relief and healing. So you could take something like an aspirin. I wouldn't recommend that because, again, it's aspirin is not the aspirin it used to be. I would recommend something more like the MSM, methyl, sul methyl sulfur methane, and dissolve that in the DMSO first, then put it on the area. And it will, because of its solvent properties, and because of the fact, like I just told you, it will literally penetrate through the skin, into the bloodstream, into the bone, ligaments, tendons, etc. You are now driving healing things directly into the area. The fact that it has sulfur is huge because when we're talking joints, ligaments, tendons, and muscles, sulfur is an extremely undervalued um, element that is required for healing and rebuilding tissue, especially cartilage. Um, it has to have sulfur. So you can literally regenerate tissue with DMSO as well. And the fact that it's a topical thing makes it almost a miracle that it can do all this. So as I told you, DMSO, because it has the 
uh, oxygen in it as well, you're now driving oxygen into areas that really have low circulation of blood, so low oxygen. But we all know that the oxygen is key to healing. So now you have something that's got the methyl groups that are huge, the sulfur for healing, and the oxygen for healing, all in one compound. That's a miracle because it can penetrate through the skin into the bloodstream. Now, their part is its transdermal absorption. Like I said, it can go through. That's also a cautionary part of using DMSO. So while I said that it blows away the other topical analgesics healers, allegedly, I believe the other ones don't heal at all. Only DMSO is a topical healer. It's the only one I know of on earth. Um, it, because of the fact that it's a solvent and it can break down other things inside of it and then transport it through your body. This also means that if you have dirt or bacteria or viruses or anything on your skin, or you contaminated the DMSO with anything not good, remember it's going into your body, it's going into your bloodstream and you could have some issues. But if you approach this the right way, which I'm going to show you how to do, tell you how to do, um, it is by far and away the most effective a topical thing you can use on the planet and why it's not more widely used is beyond me again probably because of the fact that it's an organic compound so it can't be patented so the big companies big pharma etc can't make money on it that's probably the reality again here at k3 we're here to tell you the truth we're not here to sugarcoat things we're here to make you think and maybe challenge your current beliefs that is our goal it's always been our goal it always will be our goal we're trying to help you with natural they call them alternative medicine things, but I would call them the original medicine things. So, so we just told you some of the, the properties. So the use is basically of DMSO as far as we're concerned. There are other uses. It's uh, people that have uh, trained horses or race horses or et cetera are very familiar with DMSO because it was it's commonly used in the veterinarian world for healing and analgesic effects of race horses, et cetera. Um, horses, if you're not a horse person, um, and I'm not the most knowledgeable, but I have family and cousins that are the most knowledgeable in the world about horses. You can use DMSO to help uh, horses. They have a lot of issues with their legs because they're such a big, powerful animal on these little, tiny little limbs, uh, their legs. So they have a lot of issues there, and you can use DMSO to help. So you can use them in humans, too. It's important to note that uh, DMSO is not approved by the FDA for anything other than a, a bladder condition. Um uh, one thing it's approved for, but it's not illegal either. You can easily find DMSO online, even through Amazon, Google, whoever, and um, it'll usually say not for human use. But again, as long, and I think it's mainly because of these characteristics that if you contaminated it with like something bad, it will go into your bloodstream. So you have to be careful. So I also want to say that I've used it many, many times. Quick background again, um, when I was winning my first or last high school powerlifting championship, I can't remember, it doesn't really matter. Um, I had ripped my spinal rector, one, my left spinal rector completely off. It was not attached. And this was only a few weeks away from the meet. And my dad uh, found DMSO um, and we did that. We took aspirin, crushed the aspirin, mixed it into the DMSO until it was dissolved and put DMSO on my back like every 20 minutes the entire meet and I won again. Um, with only one spinal rector, I think I deadlifted 400 some pounds, weighing 114 pounds as a teenager. So pretty, pretty impressive if you consider it. That is way back then. This was in the 80s, 1980s, is when I realized how powerful DMSO is. For some reason, it still has not caught on. People are still complaining about all these arthritis and different things that could be dramatically either cured or pain extremely reduced by the use of DMSO. Again, if you're careful. So. How do you use DMSO carefully? Let's get to the, 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 the meat of the problem here, the issue. Um, you would take, you take, get the DMSO wherever you get it from. If it, it came to you in glass, perfect. Leave it in the glass container it came in. If it came to you in plastic, which many of the DMSO companies that are selling it will send it to you in plastic, get it out of that and put it into, because again, remember, I just told you, it's a solvent. So to have a solvent sitting in plastic is not a great idea because people are worried about um, microplastics as it is. If you're going to leave it in plastic, you're definitely going to get, if you're worried about a water bottle leaching microplastics, which water is one of the most mildest solvent on the earth, you compare it to DMSO, which is an extremely highly solvent compound, 
probably not the best idea to leave it in plastic. So when you get it, remove it to glass. Again, I recommend getting the gel form. And then what you do, let's, let's just say uh, you got a bad knee and you don't want knee surgery and you're going to try everything you can to stop having knee surgery. Um, DMSO would be a great candidate. I would get something like MSM or a joint support compound of some sort that you would normally take a capsule or a powder, whatever. Instead of taking it orally, get your get out a uh, a little bowl, ceramic bowl, glass bowl, and put about two tablespoons, maybe if we're talking one area, you know, at least a tablespoon per area, and then mix a capsule or two of either an aspirin, a joint thing. Uh, complex from from a company maybe like K3 Nutriments, or you could use MSM, methyl sulfur methane, whatever it is. Mix that in really well. Wait till it's dissolved. It'll be clear again once it's dissolved. Once it's clear, make sure your hands are washed. Make sure your knee or any area that you're going to apply it to is washed and clean and dried. Once that happens, make sure there's no even the, even if you use a paper towel to dry the area, be careful because paper towels have dyes in them. So make sure it is dry and natural. I would take a rag or a dry towel or a dry rag and damp the area until it's dry. Then you can either take gloves that you're gonna throw away right afterwards or just take your bare hands. Again, make sure your fingers or hands are clean and then grab it up and just rub it in. It only takes 10 to 15 minutes and the compound will be completely penetrated through your skin into your muscle, bone, tendons, joints, bloodstream, etc. Um, now there's a few cautionary things. So with anything, there can be a side effect that's negative. With DMSO, the side effects are almost all positive. However, and I, I, I get this side effect every time I use it, which is often, is you will have a garlic um, breath. So people around you are like, man, you stink. Um, just remember that for about a whole 24 hours after you apply it, you will have a smell of like a garlic-like odor coming out of your respiration. Um, it just happens. It's part of the just natural smell. Well, think about it. It's got sulfur in it. It's automatically not going to smell great, right? It's also proof that it's going into your bloodstream because it comes out of your breath even once you apply it on your elbow, knee, shoulder joint, wherever, ankle, wherever you're putting it. Um, and then let it go in. Like I said, 10 to 15 minutes, it will be completely penetrated, and the area that you put it in will be dry. There will be nothing there. Now, the other side effect, besides the garlic one, which that's not a big deal, right? If you do it on a day or days, you're not going to be socializing with people or whatever. It's totally fine. But the other one is going to be skin irritation. Um, you can't avoid that one. And again, these aren't really horrible side effects, right? But, but they're side effects you should know before you try it. Is your skin will be bright red probably for two to three hours. And the reason why is obvious. Your skin is meant to be a barrier from the outside world. Well, something like DMSO comes in and plows right through it, all the way through it into your body, your skin is going to be upset. <laughs> okay, it's going to be a little bit pissed off because you're penetrating chemical through it, especially if you're adding aspirin or a joint complex compound or, like I said, MSM, another joint complex compound. You put any of those things in there, it's pushing it through the, the pores and stuff of the skin, through the skin, so it's going to irritate it. So just keep that in mind. You're going to smell like garlic when you do it, and you're gonna potentially have red skin, irritated skin, it's gonna itch for a little while, but then it's gone. The benefits though that you receive, that you get out of the DMSO, way outweigh those two side effects. The only other side effect that's possible, and this one is really bad if it happens, is it can hurt your eyesight. Now again, I told you I personally, anything that I talk about on K3 is stuff that I've tried before. So uh, I personally have never experienced that. Um, I don't wear glasses, contacts, anything I have 2020 or better vision, um, not a problem. But just keep that in mind that they're at high, high doses. Um, and we'll, we'll discuss how long to do this, et cetera, here in a second. Um, those are the three things. So garlic, like breath, respiration, smell coming off you from the sulfur, um, a little bit of irritation through the skin, um, you know, for the first one to two hours. Again, 10 to 15 minutes to go through the skin and be dry on the surface. And then you can put clothes, you can touch it again, no problem. It won't pull anything else through because it's already went through. Um, but just remember that. And then high doses or improper use of DMSO can cause vision problems. I've never heard of it, but I guess in trials and certain things they did, you know, probably torturing some mice or something, it's horrible, right? But somehow they figured out that at super high doses, you can hurt your eyesight. So 
what is the proper way to apply it and to use it. So I just told you the proper way to apply it. Make sure the area is super clean and dry. Make sure your hands or whoever's going to apply it and touch your skin to the surface of the DMSO is super clean and dry. And then apply it. Okay, rub it in. It doesn't have to be very long at all. Rub it in for like 10 seconds. You don't have to sit there and do it uh, very long because it'll take care of it itself. Trust me. <laughs> you just need to apply it and be done. Then don't let anything touch the area for 10 to 15 minutes. You'll know because after a little while, it'll be dry and you know that everything's fine. Then you can put clothes on, touch it. It doesn't matter. Um, to use it in a proper way, you'll use it one to seven days. Now, even one application will help analgesically. So the pain level will drop even after one time. The healing takes more like seven days. So they say, um, if you're gonna go through a period of using it, you wanna do it for about seven days in a row, um, applying it two to three times a day at most. And again, I would say about a tablespoon per an area. So if you're gonna do two knees, two tablespoons. If you're gonna do two knees, two shoulders, four tablespoons. If you're gonna do just one ankle, one tablespoon. That's how I would do the dose. And then again, two to three times a day, seven days max. That is nowhere near a dose that's gonna cause the eye problem. Um, you won't notice anything. But um, be cautionary of that, I'm not using too much of that. And then be really careful of what you put with the compound. Okay, sorry about that. So um, yeah, once you do it like that, do it for seven days and that should help most of the healing. If you, if you have bigger problems, like major knee issues, major shoulder problems, you know, things that really probably already require surgery, you're gonna have to do it more often. But again, don't do it more than seven days in a row without at least a week break in between. Then you can come back and do it for another week, and, um, but you wanna give it a week in between because it, again, evidently too much DMSO in the system because remember it goes into your bloodstream so it's going to end up going through your whole body um, it's going to do most of its healing right where it goes in but it's going to go everywhere because of the bloodstream effect of getting into your blood so uh, it needs that time in between for your liver and stuff to to remove um, whatever it is that could cause your eyesight issue um, so again hopefully this one helps this is a different one again I'm not sure why DMSO is not more widely used um, for people that like the topical painkillers. And again, this one not only helps reduce the pain, but it actually helps heal. So, and think about it, you can put things with it, like I said, MSM, joint complexes, things like that, chondritin, um, all those things will go right into the tissue. And adding that extra oxygen and methylation and sulfur, huge for healing. So. I'd give it a try. Um, if you can handle the, the garlic odor for a little bit and you can handle the little bit of irritation that you have for a while while it goes through the skin, you're going to be on your way to a much, much better pain reliever and healing than any of the other marketed uh, solutions. Thanks. Stay healthy. Stay K3. Take care.